Well, good morning, Jess. The thing that's kind of um, uh, probably a bummer for you not being here is you get to see some wonderful, wonderful people all dressed up here. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's see, we've got a couple new guys in our classroom. You know, say hey, dudes. Okay, all right, hey, what's up? Okay, we got the old lumberjack back there. Okay, and we got um, got Sam, and no, she's doing the man spread thing there. Okay, okay, and we got little Ianetta. Okay, and I don't know what to call Max here. Maxine, Maxine, and then we got the guy that's too cool back there. We can't even see him. Look, look, look at this. You can't even see yourself. How can you even see the board? Okay. And then we've got all our Chartier. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, the thing is, you know, Max looks like he's enjoying it quite a bit. Okay. Um, personally, I I didn't um, I didn't wear um, well I I'm wearing something, um, but you just can't see it. But anyway, um, so on the 58, we can obviously tell it's the greatest integer function, but what is it? What's happened to it? Well, it's stretched twice as long horizontally. You'll notice that vertically nothing's changed; it's still going up one step at a time but the treads of every step is now twice as long as it was before. So then we think about that, we've got to think about, we've got a horizontal, okay, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. we got a horizontal stretch times two, okay? So how do we deal with a horizontal stretch of two? Well, what we'll do is we'll make a change inside, and since it's horizontal, it's got to be the opposite. So when I say the opposite, would that mean a negative 2? No, we got to take a look at the reciprocal. Because a negative would flip it. We don't want it flipped, so it's going to be a 1 half x. Okay? So that's where, that's, because I see something twice as long, I see something horizontal, so now I've got to go ahead and divide by 2 instead of times 2. Um, to make it the opposite of what we're dealing with. And another way to think about it too is since this is one half of my input, I need to put inputs in that are now twice as big as what they used to be. So my x's are going to be twice as big as what they used to be for that first step. Anything else? She's Max and Maxie. Just letting it all hang out. Dude looks like a lady from Aerosmith. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. So the composition of functions, I only asked you to do 7 and 37. 7 was just um, putting those together. 7 should have been really very straightforward on, on the most part. The only thing I will say about 7 is if you have x squared over 4x minus 5 on that one where we're dividing, can I cancel my x's? No, I cannot. Remember, if it's part of an addition or a subtraction, I cannot cancel. Okay? Um, so, 37, that was uh, the composition of one into the other. Okay? Make sure that you just put one in and then simplify if you can. Okay? We'll do a couple other things today and then we'll look at some practical application of section 1.8. We're going to stick on 1.8 right now. Okay? So anything that you want to talk about? Okay. Well, let's take a look. Lots of these that, um, well, we'll just kind of, we'll kind of just sprint through this a little bit. We'll give you some more time. Okay. So if I'm doing something, well, first of all, if we do something like this. If I'm looking at some functions and uh, I'm saying, okay, let's do some, let's add these functions together, let's, you know, let's uh, subtract these functions, okay? The one thing that, that you got to realize is on each point, the x's aren't going to change, but my, if I take f of x plus g of x, I'm adding my results, okay? So like in this case here, if we did number two, 
if I had, you know, my f of f of negative 2 is negative 2, my g of negative 2 is 1, so if I would take f of negative 2 plus g of negative 2, I would get negative 1. So if I add these two functions together at each point, I can get the graph of, of, um, of the f plus g function. So here we go. I got negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1. 0 plus 1 gives me 1. Okay. So realize that if I ask you to do something like f plus g of x, I'm just saying take the results, add them together, and put the graph together. Okay. Um, if I did something like this, 14 f minus g of negative 1. There's actually a couple different ways to do that. You could take negative 1, put it in for each one, and then subtract those values. Or you could make a rule for f minus g of x. So we would do something like x squared plus 1 minus x minus 4. Okay. So then what I would do is I would just go ahead and simplify x squared minus x plus 5, and then I could just plug in negative 1. It's the same thing. Regardless of whether you um, do it in terms of numbers, plug it in, plug it in, subtract, or make a rule for the overall f minus g function, and then plug it in, you're going to get the same thing. Okay? Um, correct. So, all, which, which one would you guys rather do on this problem? Would you rather plug in negative 1, plug in negative 1, and then subtract them, or make a rule, then, then fill it out? Plug in negative 1 right away? Okay, you can do it either way. Okay, you alright, dude? Okay. Your arms look a little stronger than uh, Kobe's. Yeah, that's Yep, yep. So, um, those, we will do a couple of those, that's not a big deal. Okay, these I think are interesting, and the re reason I want to take a look at this just as much as anything is for science ACT. Okay, we're going to boogie through the, um, this is uh, page 90. Okay, I'm not going to take a look at 43. Um, but 46, I think, is very interesting. Okay? I wish the answer wasn't sitting right here, but that's all right. If I take f of g of 1, you remember your composition of functions, which comes first, g or f? g goes into f. So we need to find g of 1 first. From the graph, what's g of 1? 3. So now g of 1 is 3. So now I need to find f of that 3. Okay, what's f of 3? 2. Okay, so my understanding is on the a science ACT, you got to read graphs and get information from one graph and take it to another graph, stuff like that. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing here. So on this one, g of f of 3. What do you think for this one right here, 46B? Okay, it is 2. Because f of 3 is 2, and then I come over here, g of 2 is 2. Okay, let's do f of, f of 3. f of f of 3. 0, okay. Because f of 3 is 2, so now I'm finding f of 2, f of 2 is 0. Okay. What's f of f of f of 3? Correct, because we already found out that f of f of 3 is 0, so now f of 0 is 4. Okay. So, I think those are some good things to take a look at. Okay. So, today, let's go ahead and have you guys finish this section. That's all right. There we go. Ah, boom.
She's mighty, mighty. Page 89, number one. And then I'm going to throw some things that are a little bit more challenging at you here. Um, Eleven and on eleven, simplify those things. Don't just, you know. So go ahead and find a common denominator, add them together, stuff like that. Let's work on those skills, okay? And simplifying those things. Okay. Fifteen. I've got to do seventeen. their word problems very well. Okay, I'm going, to wrap, I'm going to finish with one graph, 55. I want a nice graph. So big graph. And let's go from 0 miles per hour to, um, let's go 80 miles per hour. Okay, so I'm talking this graph. You might even do like a full page. Okay, and let's do different colors for each graph, okay, and, um, and I think you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when you get when you get there, or you can say, okay, let's do 55 right away, let's get it done, and then I don't have to worry about making a graph for the rest of this. That's just some, a topic that I like to talk about every once in a while um, to keep you guys safe. Stop right there.
So, graph paper. That one, you know, I, I didn't give any other word problems, so let's just do 55 really well. It's, it's, it's very worthwhile. Will kick in.